What is going on, my fellow nerds? Shane here to finally bring you, at long last, my full review for the Mobvoi Tick Watch Pro 3 Ultra GPS smartwatch. This thing is running Wear OS. I've been wearing it now for a few weeks, and I'm really really enjoying it obviously i did an unboxing video a little bit back so if you missed that check the link right below that like button for that full unboxing and setup experience but in this video we're going to dive pretty deep on this thing i'm going to try to give you as much information as i possibly can but let's start off with going around the hardware of this watch and i'll show you what it looks like up nice and close and we'll talk about the buttons the screen the microphone all of that good stuff. So let's switch over here to the overhead camera so that you can get a good look at what we're talking about. Now, first thing I should point out here is it actually came with these silicone bands, right? And these bands are are totally fine. You know, like they're they're silicone. They're your pretty typical uh, sport band. They're, they are 22 millimeters, and they have this quick release clasp mechanism here, which makes them super super easy to switch out. And these things are going to be fine. For most people i however uh, have a hard time uh, putting these things together actually sliding them in and putting the hook in and sliding them through uh, while i'm wearing it my hands don't work great for things like that um, so what i prefer to have is something like this that basically just has a quick release clasp like that um, or a mechanism maybe would be a better word and so i just used this a watch band that I actually had used on my Moto 360 all those years ago and it just installed as easily as anything and it happens to match really really well so that's what I went ahead and did and the cool thing is this is a 22 millimeter band as I said so any 22 millimeter band should pretty much work for this thing so that is great but let's go around the hardware here we have a 1.39 inch display, which I think is the main story of this thing. And the cool thing about it is that it is double layered. So you have what you can see here now is an LCD screen. This takes up effectively like no power at all. But on that, you can see the time, you can see the date, you can see the seconds counting, you can see your steps, and you can see a little bit of an approximation there of your battery level. And the cool thing about it is the more direct the light is on it, the easier it actually is to see. Now this thing can be backlit. So when you you lift it up, it will backlight. The problem I have with that, you know, that works really well, but at night when I'm trying to sleep, I put it in this mode permanently and then I roll over and it shines and it wakes me up and I don't like that. So I have the backlight actually disabled. But the cool thing is, when you're outside in bright sunlight, it's super easy to read. When you're inside and you need to check the time, if it gets too dark where you can't see, just push a button and the OLED itself will then activate. And that is obviously quite bright and clear and that is visible in any sort of light at all. Really, really nice crisp screen. I love this dual layer approach where you have the LCD and the OLED really really cool really really smart so you also do have these two crowns here now the most curious thing about these crowns to me is the fact that while they do rotate they don't seem to do anything in rotation so you would expect to be able to scroll through things with these like on the moto 360 but in fact neither one of them do anything they do both click though and that's what they actually functionally do you have a crown around the outside with these seconds on them but unlike some other smartwatches this does not rotate or anything that is a fixed uh, type deal and then of course on the back side you have the magnetic charging uh, connector there and then you have all of your fitness and heart rate all these sort of trackers right there in the middle so i should also mention that this smartwatch is running qualcomm's 4100 chipset but there's something more going on here because Mobboy has actually added its own co-processor to handle the essential mode that i will be talking about a little bit later on as well as to help run this lcd screen which you will see there in this dual layer setup and this is a pretty standard wear os setup right where if you swipe to your left you're going to get your sort of google feed and that's just fine if you swipe down you're going to get sort of a quick settings thing with google pay and airplane mode all these sorts of things and a link to your actual settings swiping to your right you have these sort of customizable tiles you can make them be whatever you want them to be if you long press on them you can then add change uh, change the order of them and so forth and so on and that works really well swiping down does bring you to your notifications which are swipe away to clear this top crown whenever you hit it will wake up the smartwatch like so if you hit it again it will bring you into your list of apps which you can scroll back like that again i wish i could scroll through them like this or like this but that is not a thing if you hit it again you will go back home if you long press it 
it will trigger the Google Assistant. And I'll actually give you a chance here to hear the speaker on this thing because I should have mentioned this already. There's a microphone there and there is a speaker on that side. So let's go ahead and trigger the Assistant. And I'll let you hear what it sounds like. What's the forecast for today? Today in Knoxville, it'll be sunny with a forecasted high of 45 and a low of 22. Currently, it's 35 degrees and partly cloudy. So it's not the loudest thing uh, in the world, but I think it does totally suffice. Now, when you do have a notification, I'll point out you have a little red circle down there that tells you, hey, if you swipe down, you're going to have an, another notification. And again, you can clear that like that. And of course, when you do get a notification, like let's say from a text message, you can very easily select that and send some quick responses if that works for you. If you want to send a more direct reply, you can either do emojis. You can actually properly swipe type on here. I don't know how well that's going to work for you it works okay for me or you can use the microphone and just say whatever message it is that you want to say and send that along instead replying to notifications on here is excellent it's generally very quick very detailed and I do it all the time. Um, on that same crown, if you double tap it, what's gonna happen is it's gonna actually boost the brightness to a rather obscene level. I'm sure this is great if you're out in the broad daylight, it's super bright outside and you can't see your watch. For me, every time I hit it, I feel like my eyes are being seared and I can't wait for it to uh, eventually go back to the normal brightness, which does take a second. Okay, we should be good now. As for this button down here, it is customizable. So the way I have mine set up is once you hit this one to open it up to unlock the the watch if you hit it once i have mine set to give me a flashlight and i i use this all the time it's actually quite bright um a lot of times I'll, I'll get up very early and my wife might still be asleep and i want to be able to look around without turning on all the lights so i'll just simply unlock hit my flashlight and i can look around and do whatever i need to do awesome love having a flashlight on my on my uh, wrist at all times and it is actually quite bright if i uh double tap it though I will actually get Google Pay, which is awesome. Tap to pay and off you go. If you long press it, you get a different little menu here, which has an option to drain your speakers of water to switch to essential mode, reset, I'm sorry, restart, power off, or then to customize that function button. If you see that speaker draining option, that's basically what that's going to do is it's going to play some sound. designed to eject water out of that speaker quite smart pretty pretty cool little feature to have because this thing is of course waterproof so as for that essential mode that you see here if we select it basically what it's going to do is it's going to greatly extend your battery life and what it basically does is rather than getting this kind of thing when you need it, when it reverts to this LCD only display, which should happen in just a second, your watch is basically just restricted to this. If I hit this button here to wake it up, it's just gonna backlight this instead of actually giving my giving me my full Wear OS experience. I'm not gonna have my apps. I'm not gonna be able to do anything really at all. But what it will do is it still is going to track my sleep. It's gonna track my heartbeat. It's gonna do all those tracking things, but you're just not gonna have access to your smartwatch features. What I've done here is I've actually gone in and told it that I wanted to automatically switch to essential mode under particular times, like when I'm sleeping. And by doing this, I'm extending my battery life from being already pretty good to being even better. We'll talk about battery your life more here shortly. In terms of some of the apps that are pre-installed on here, you have a whole host of, of health tracking applications. Let's look at something like Tick Pulse. Because one cool thing about this is that you can, unlike a Fitbit, you can actually see your history right here on your watch as it does check for my pulse. Now you can actually see that data here. Now there is an accompanying app, which I'm going to mostly show you this data on the app rather than trying to show you it on this little bitty screen but i do want you to, to understand that you can see all this stuff directly on your wrist itself i got a pretty darn good night's uh, sleep last night despite being as you can see an orange there awake at about four o'clock this morning for some time and i didn't go back to sleep and i got a good amount of sleep now one thing you're going to want to do on most of these things is when you go into them you're going to want to scroll down here until you see a settings cog and you're going to want to turn on 24-hour monitoring. So there's several different apps in here like Sleep, Pulse, Oxygen. That's going to track the oxygen level of your blood. Uh, exercise, Zen, Breathe, all of these things. You're going to want to go into each of them 
and go down to that cog and turn on 24 hour monitoring because if you fail to do that when you go to that accompanying app you may not have the data you're expecting to see and i wish that was a little bit more clear i wish that there had and maybe there was maybe i just missed it during the setup somehow but i wish that there had been some sort of a screen that basically said hey do you want to turn on 24 hour monitoring across the board on all of these things because so i would have just said yes rather than missing a couple of days worth of data because i i didn't know i needed to tell it i wanted that on all the time because by default it will only check your heart rate, your oxygen level, and these things like that when you manually enter that app on your wrist and then tell it to do so. Well, I, mean, I want it to just be doing it in the background so that when I pull up my, my application on my phone, I'm going to just have that information there. So there were a couple of things I forgot to mention in my initial recording, so I'm going to talk about them quickly here now. Mobvoi is not just focused on tracking your moment-to-moment -moment health like your typical smartwatch, where you can just see your stats and so forth. They actually are looking at long-term trends. And what they mean by this is actually looking at the totality of the metrics they're gathering from this smartwatch to kind of get a general idea of what's going on with you, right? So I talk about here later that they're tracking things like your mental fatigue, your stress level, things like that. But then they're also tracking things like irregular heartbeats or atrial fibrillation. So they're basically, they're just looking at everything and trying to give you a general idea of the trend of your health over, like I said, many different metrics. And I think that this is what they're trying to do to separate themselves from these other health tracking smartwatches. Now, there are two apps that you're going to use in coordination with this smartwatch. So the first one you're going to have to download during setup is, of course, just the Wear OS app. And you can do quite a few things in the Wear OS app, like change your watch face and so forth. And again, you're going to need this to actually set the watch up. But the app that you're going to be actually spending most of your time in for the fitness and sleep and health tracking is the Mobvoi app. And I'm gonna launch that here. You're gonna find this in the Play Store just like any other app. But let's kinda of look and see what kind of stuff we get in this app. So you see up here at the top, I've got my 24 hour physical and mental stress monitoring. And it uses a host of sensors to try to approximate uh, how mentally fatigued you are and what your energy level is. I'm not entirely sure how accurate this is or how accurate this could be. There's been times it generally pretty much just always thinks that my mental fatigue level is is relatively low and that my energy level is just constantly uh, all the way up to the top. That could just be because I'm a very jittery person. Maybe he just thinks I'm super energized. I don't know that I would agree uh, with this sort of information, but whatever, it's there. It's kind of interesting to be able to see. It's got your uh, activity here as well, your active hours, how much exercise, how many steps. And I believe that this is just a single day view, and you can also go and look between weeks and months and so forth and so on. But it does give you pretty good data here. You can see that I've taken over 10,000 steps a day. I've traveled about 5.2 miles in kilometers. I don't know what that would be, maybe like 10 or so. How many active hours? As you can see, there is nothing here in this exercise portion because the entire time I have had this watch in my possession, it has been rainy and windy and gross. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go for a very long walk and I will come back. We're going to fill this out and I'm going to tell you exactly how that went as well. We're going to go ahead and hit go and let's see what the tracking looks like when we get done. So I wanted to point out also while I'm in this exercise mode that you'll see a timer is going off how long I've been exercising as well as some other information there. So that is pretty useful as well. And if you actually wake the thing up, this is kind of what you're going to see on your walk. You've got your pace, your speed, and your distance as well as that time. Okay, we are back. We have completed the exercise. You can see here that I exercised one time. I burned almost 200 kcals, 1.15 miles. You can see my average heartbeat. The duration actually was not nearly that long. I thought I ended the workout, but in fact, there was a confirmation check mark that I should have hit. So it continued going for several minutes after that. But anyways, let's go to that outdoor walk and you can see what else we can see here. We can actually see elevation gained and loss and that actually makes sense because it's an up and down i'm in i'm in tennessee i'm in knoxville so it's very hilly here so that's cool i can see my elevation as it went up and down you can see my heart rate as it went up and down average speed and how that changed my step frequency i would guess that's about whenever i stopped to record 
uh, looking at the watch itself because I kind of stopped moving step length. And for my own privacy, I'm not going to show you this, but it does actually have a map that shows the route I took very, very accurately. And that map, that trail is actually color coded to show my actual speed along that route. So you can look and see, hey, I was going up a hill here. I know that that's a hill and I slowed down or I sped up whatever you want to be able to see. Actually, very, very accurate. But of course, an outdoor walk is only one of several different workouts that it is actually able to track. So I didn't have obviously time to try out all of these things, but I can tell you that the outdoor walk worked out very, very well. And then a cool thing too is the sleep tracking. So you can actually see different phases of your sleep, your heart rate while you're sleeping. And it tries to approximate here. Were you awake? Were you in REM sleep, light sleep, deep sleep? This was a decent night's sleep according to this. I do prefer on Fitbit that they give you sort of a rating that kind of approximates. This gives you a sleep efficiency, which I don't really know what's good and what's bad. So this is a sleep efficiency of 79%. And to me, I would have said I did not sleep very well. And I guess if you look at the orange up top, how often I was awake and how much deep sleep I got, I guess that would maybe reflect that. But I feel like 79%, that's like what? That's like a C, I think. That's a, that's a pretty okay grade. And then you can look at this uh, by the week and even by the month. You can also see where your heart rate has been. You can see here, you know, during the or middle of the day here, I got rather active while I was at my part-time job. And that's cool to be able to see that as well. You can see your blood oxygen, which for some reason, it just, sometimes it just doesn't really check this. I'd like to see it checking it more often. You can see here it checked it three times, here it checked it five times, but yesterday only once and today it's not checked it at all. And I don't know why sometimes it checks it more than others. That's a little bit weird. And then this is a strong stress rating, which again, it tries to use this host of sensors to try and kind of approximate if it thinks you're stressed out or not. And again, I don't know how accurate this actually is, but it's data there if you want to follow that. Um, here's another one. So this one's supposed to be tracking the uh, the sound around you and determining if you're in a, a consistently loud environment because that could potentially be harmful to your hearing. And it just doesn't update automatically. I've got it set on the watch to be doing this, but it just, it only does it whenever I manually open it for whatever reason. And then through here, you can also change some settings, go to some watch faces and things like that, which there are obviously a ton of watch faces there, both free and purchasable that you can choose from in this app. But overall, in terms of actual health tracking in this app, I think it's relatively good. I think that it's got some strong points. I don't know if it's quite as good as the Fitbit app, but that's a pretty high standard. I think overall, it's more than good enough. Now, something I've heard several people say in the comments on my unboxing video is something to the effect of, wow, that watch is really, really big. It looks kind of clunky. And look, I can forgive you for thinking that when you see it on my wrist, but I want you to keep something very important in mind. I am about five foot 11 and I walk around about 145 pounds. I have very small wrists. I'm not a big guy. I'm a rather thin kind of person. So, so let me show you a picture here I found online of this watch being worn by a normal wrist sized person. So it's still a big watch, but it doesn't look nearly as big on a normal size wrist as it does to my rather small wrist. So again, just keep that in mind if you're thinking, my God, that thing looks huge. Just consider who's wearing it and that it might look different on your wrist. As for battery life, things have been pretty good for me. So basically I'm getting about three days on a single charge and that's about what they said I should be expecting. They're really nailing that. The only thing I've done, like I mentioned, is I have a set that it goes into essential mode at 10 p.m. and comes out of it at 6.30 a.m. so that I can get all my notifications and so forth going. Obviously, I don't need notifications and stuff like that. I don't need this thing lighting up or doing any vibrating while I am sleeping. So it goes to essential mode. It tracks my sleep, my heart rate, all that stuff flawlessly while I am asleep. And then right as I'm getting ready to get up out of bed, I feel a little vibration that says, hey, we're waking up, which is great because that's when my alarm goes off anyways. It's when I naturally wake up too at this point. And I, I get up and I go about my day. All I have to do is use the little pin to unlock it and I'm good. And so because of that, three days on a single charge is pretty darn solid. And when I do need to charge it, pop it off, it magnetically attaches to the back. 
And it charges pretty fast. It doesn't quite charge as fast as my Fitbit Versa 3, but it charges fast enough that if I leave it on that charger for an hour or so, I'm going to be charged back up and ready to go for another three days. So it's pretty easy to ignore. And yes, you can absolutely sleep with this thing on like I have been and do that for multiple days before having to charge it. So battery life has been absolutely good enough for me to switch from my Fitbit to this device. So the final question here is going to be this, is this thing worth the 300 US dollars it is to purchase it? And for my money, when I think about the Moto 360 I used to have, when I think about my Fossil Sport that I had after that, and I think about my Fitbit Versa, and all of these were sort of in the 200, 250-ish range whenever I purchased them, I think at $299, this thing is absolutely worth it. If you're looking for a really high-end smartwatch that really doesn't falter anywhere, it's got good battery life, performance is fantastic, the screen is bright, that LCD screen that is on there is really, really cool as well. And personally, I think it looks pretty decent. It doesn't look like a gaudy, weird, square smartwatch. It just looks like a watch, which I really do appreciate. And then you start looking at all of the features that this thing has, like that built-in GPS for those workouts where maybe you want to leave your giant phone at home. Well, your GPS is going to pick up just fine on your watch so that you actually are able to do that. And of course, you do totally have the ability to install Spotify or YouTube Music and then to actually pair this to a set of earbuds, download the songs, the playlists that you like to run to or whatever, and then literally just leave your phone at home. Let this thing play the music that's downloaded to a set of earbuds paired directly to the watch, GPS, music on the watch. You're totally set. I love having that essential mode there that if, hey, my battery ever got really low and I couldn't charge it, I could throw it on essential mode and apparently I've got 45 days and I believe that because when I sleep, I don't lose charge on this thing. It's kind of insane how little charge you lose in that essential mode. Really, really cool to have that in your back pocket as well. So first off, thanks to Mobboy for sending this guy over. I really do appreciate it. Thanks to you lovely people for making it through this very long, very in-depth review. Hopefully it was useful and informational for you lovely people. If you have any questions at all, please drop them in the comments. I will be more than happy to address them. Check out the links down there below that like button because I'm going to have links to this watch for you to purchase if you want to do so. Guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.